net to dev. Okay, I decided to do this video to answer a couple of our viewers' issues that they're facing with React JS interaction with Web3, in particular when calling buttons. So here's the thing. When we have an issue where we cannot click that button, and that button in this case is interacting with a Web3 wallet, or in this case, it's interacting using a Web3 call, probably have to take a look at the contract ABI. And I actually mentioned on previous videos that the contract ABI is the link between the blockchain and your Web3 application. So how does the React.js server know what functions do we have available in the smart contract? Okay, so that's how we tell this Web3 application, our React.js application, that there is a function in the smart contract that we are allowed to talk to, or we know that there is a function that we can interact with. So the way we do that is by importing the ABI or the application binary interface. This is literally the link between Web3 and the blockchain, okay? So that contract ABI, it's what will allow us to talk to the blockchain because that's how the React application knows, hey, if you're telling me I'm allowed to mint or if you're telling me that I need to contact a contract and call the mint function or the stake function on stake, whichever is the function that we are going to talk to the smart contract, I need to tell React.js and React.js needs to know that yes, that is a function available on the smart contract. And we have here, this is the structure that you will use to send that call. So to send that request via Web3. So who is going to give us that Web3 handshake? It's gonna be your wallet. So when your wallet establish the connection to React, or in this case, to your web front end, it is actually giving you the interface to talk to the blockchain. But React doesn't know what functions does the smart contract have. It needs to know so then we can properly talk to the wallet and say, hey, I need to talk to the smart contract and this is what we need to do, okay? And the wallet will establish that connection to the blockchain. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let me show you how quickly can we identify or how simply can we troubleshoot or identify any possible issues that are related to missing ABI functions. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm gonna take the opportunity to show you. This is what we will be working with in the upcoming videos. So I am developing a completely redesigned NFT staking dash mint application. And I'm gonna show you how you can code all this by yourself. This is gonna be a fun, fun video, okay? So you can see I can do connect. Once I click that button, it will change and display connected. I can buy NFTs. I can use different cryptocurrencies based on the contract that we recently work with in the last video, okay? So now we can choose which cryptocurrency do we want to use to purchase. Not only that, the moment I connect, I will get the information for my stake NFTs. This is the uh, NFT IDs. Those are the IDs that are currently in the vault and it gives you the total amount of NFTs along with how many staking rewards are we earning so far. Mm, very cool, alrighty? So let's jump onto the issue that, that I've been reading comments about. Okay, so, so what I've been reading in the comments, it's that if we click any of those, for example, staking, let's go down. So if we click stake on stake, that is not working. Okay, let's, um, let's do one thing. What I'm gonna do, I am going to break it and we will see if that's the issue that we are facing, okay? So then I'm gonna show you why it's super important. I think it's the most important thing in Web3 uh, when it comes to uh, Ethereum-based blockchains. The ABI, it's literally how you talk to the blockchain, okay? So you gotta make sure that you understand that. Let's do one thing. 
I am going to go on to my app and we are going to find the stake and unstake function, okay? So let me go back and here we go. So if we see here, stake it, unstake it, those are attached to the button. So if we go down here, we should get the button. So the button for stake it, it's actually pointing to a function stake it, which if we go a little bit here, a little bit on the top, we see the function right there, the same with on stake, okay? When we cannot click this, it means that probably this vault contract, it's missing either the AVI referenced to it or something else. I am pointing to be an issue in this particular VAR, it's not pointing to the vault contract ABI. 99% sure that the vault contract, it's not tied to the ABI. And when I say tied to the ABI, this VAR needs to be associated to the contract ABI for this particular contract, okay? Because we need to find stake. We need to find stake and on stake on that blockchain smart contract. If we don't have that function, how are we going to execute methods? We cannot, we have to find this function in the smart contract so that we can interact with it, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you if we do have the ABI, okay? And let me find where I create that var. So vault contract, it's created under connect wallet so the moment i connect wallet i click connect wallet this var will be created right or it will be generated based on the value so with web3 so with the web3 library i can grab the address of the smart contract and associate that to the abi so then when i perform those web3 calls I know exactly what options do I have to interact with, okay? So now I'm pretty sure that the issue is right here. It's on the Vault ABI. So where do we locate this? Let's scroll a little bit up and we will go to the VAR. This, by the way, is in Contract ABI. So this is the, the Smart Contract ABI. But we need to find that Vault ABI. This is the Token ABI. This will be the ERC20 token smart contract ABI, but we're looking for the vault ABI, okay? So let me go here, there we go. So this is what we're gonna be working with. Okay, so, and this is an example. Let's say you your stake and unstake buttons are not working. The stake and unstake buttons are attached to stake and unstake functions in the staking smart contract. If for some reason your mint button is not working, that is attached to the mint function, which is attached to the NFT collections more contract, okay? So with that said, now we cannot click stake and unstake. Inside Vault ABI, we got stake and unstake as functions. So let's scroll and try to find those functions. We can see that there's a function called claim and then what am I looking? This is the information that I will be looking from the user, okay? But we're looking for stake, here we go. So this is what that call is not able to find. So when you see, and I'm gonna recreate the issue, when you see that function stake, it's not found, it means that we don't have the Vault ABI with this information in React, so then it can talk to that, okay? So this is what I'm gonna do. I am going to break it on purpose, okay? I am going to go ahead, and by the way, before I do that, I am going to go back to the site. I wanna show you that it indeed works, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I am going to connect my wallet, should do, or this one should do. Okay, if I click stake, you can see that I'm able to op open my wallet and call the stake function, okay? So now let me go ahead and delete this and we'll try it again and we'll see what will happen, okay? So let me go ahead and delete this function and I'm going control S, I wanna go back. We're gonna refresh screen. I'm gonna connect my wallet and sure enough, those other functions are not affected, but let me try to now stake, nothing happens. 
Oh, by the way, let me make sure that there's no transactions pending. No, they're not. Let me go ahead. You see? Let me go ahead and refresh. Let me try it again. Go back down. Try it. Nothing happens. Now let me open the console. Vault contract. And we can see it right here. Let me see if I can scroll. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. You can see right here. Vault contract methods stake. It's not a function. Why it's not a function? Because it's not available in the Vault ABI. Okay. So you have to make sure that React has that function declared or else it will not work. The button will not know what to do. Okay. So with that said, you saw where the issue is. You don't have this function in the Vault ABI. Okay. So we're going to control Z and I'm going to bring back that. Okay. Now we got the function back in. We're going to save it. We're going to go back. We're going to uh, zoom out. Now we're going to refresh. We're going to connect and we're going to go back down and give it a shot again. You saw? There you go. Now I pretty sure that you're going to ask this question. How do I find the vault ABI? If I don't have this information, where do I get that from? And again, if you look at my videos, I show how to find it, but don't worry. I'm going to take the opportunity to show it again. And we're going to go to my profile and I'm going to go to my repo and we're going to find uh the staking this one should do it okay now what we need to do we just need to copy the entire code so i'm gonna go ahead right click select all and copy now we're gonna head to remix okay once we're at remix okay now let me just create a new file nft yeah, now we're gonna paste that staking smart contract we're not going to deploy it all we have to do is compile it right let's wait Let's compile the smart contract. Okay. We compile the entire thing. You select the smart contract from Remix, paste that smart contract here, compile, and then make sure that when you select, and I also think this could be an issue, when you copy copied the ABI, you didn't realize that you were pointing to the wrong contract. Because remember, when we compile this, all the interfaces, everything will be compiled onto separate uh, contract files. We have to scroll down and select the NFT staking smart contract. And that's where we can copy that information. Okay. And we're going to go back here. And now let's say you don't have that variable created. Okay. And this is the currency ABI. This is different. Um, okay. So let's say you don't have the vault ABI, right? you can create that. So let me go ahead and create a new var. Let's imagine that we don't have that, right? So we we're going to create a new one var and you can name this anything you want, but as long as it's referencing the right name here, because this is the vault contract var, uh, var, this has to be referencing the right name. Okay. So let's just use the same name, but, but again, you can use any name, right? And then we're going to go ahead and control V. When you control V, you paste the entire ABI. The most important thing is probably if you don't have this, you can go ahead and add that and save it and make sure that it's there. If you already have the vault ABI, okay, let's say you already have that vault ABI, which we know we have. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And instead what I'm going to do, I am going to find the vault ABI and the vault ABI ends, you know, ends right before the token ABI in my, in my case, you could be using a different code, but again, in my case, I just need to select the entire thing and I'm going to grab and select all, all the way to the opening bracket. And I'm going to control V and that's how literally I can replace it. So now I know for a fact that I have the right ABI because it's literally the ABI extracted from the smart contract. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and control S we'll test one more time and we'll see how that goes. Okay. So let me go ahead. And first of all, I'm going to reject 
and go ahead and connect my wallet. It's connected. Now I am going to try it again. Beautiful. Alrighty, there you go. Your browser console has all the answers you're looking for. When it comes to front-end development and front-end debugging, the website is not loading. The, the web page is not loading. Um, the buttons are not doing what it's supposed to be doing. I am not able to do anything because the buttons are not responding. Open, press F12, open the console, and you're gonna see definitely what the issue is. Okay, that definitely needs to be on your list of tools that you need to use to identify what could be the issue. And then we can pinpoint, oh, it means that it cannot read this particular line. And we saw it on the video. We saw that the console will tell you where do we have that issue. And then from there, we can actually continue checking. But remember, without the ABI, the front end doesn't know. It does not know. So by giving the ABI, we're giving the list of functions that we have in that smart contract to make those calls okay so ready so this is a quick video i just wanted to send that out i want to give you also to each one of you thank you so much thanks to you i am able to make this a reality thank you for supporting my channel thank you for being there all your comments keep on going Alrighty. so that's it for this video i hope you like my videos if you do you know what to do like that's obvious like like and subscribe and that's it all right take care see you on the next one